Hi guys, welcome back to Vintology by Lola. As promised, I was going to show you something that I make for Happy Mail. So it's not something for a junk journal. It's something maybe you would keep in your stash or something that you would share with somebody else. So what we're going to do is my spool ribbon holder with a little charm on top, okay? And I'm going to show you, we're going to make it very, very simply. And we're going to go through it. Hopefully it won't be too long of a video, but... If you know me or if you've been to my channel, you know that my videos always get a little long. So let's get right into it. Okay, so um, here's my suggestion for what you need. All right, let me just move this. Make sure that I'm still in frame. I want you guys to be able to see everything. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so first you're going to need some spools. I ended up, I have some very vintage spools. Um meaning very, very old. I went to the thrift store and I bought a bag of 12 or 15 of them for like $2.29. Super cheap. All I had to do is take off the thread. My recommendation is don't use something that you want to keep vintage, okay? Even if you want to do plastic, hey, you can use that too because you're going to paint them and it's going to get covered up. Second thing you're going to need is some paint. I'm just using some cheap acrylic paint. If you want, you can add some stickles or you can add some glitter. You can make it as fancy or unfancy as you want. You could also use what I've used in the past is wax. And that would keep it very vintage-y and, and kind of more um, rustic because you aren't going to cover this up with paint. So that works really well, too. Then you're going to need some heavier gauged wire. And I can't tell you what gauge this is, you guys, because it came off my spool um, and my spool lost the top, which gave the information. I just don't do really fine. So um, think of kind of like heavier than a fine for making a bracelet. Um, gosh, I, and I'm not really good at the gauges. I can't remember if it's the higher the number, the thicker the wire, or vice versa. So I'm just going to say, use what you want, okay? And then you're going to need a paintbrush. You're going to need something to wrap your wire with. And I am going to use my favorite three-in-one. You can use super glue because it, it dries a lot faster. You can use wood glue. I use this one just because I've had a lot of success with it, okay? So... How are we going to start? We are going to start with your piece of wire. I do mine extra long just in case. And then I take my Tim Holtz tool and I just spin it around to make a coil. And you aren't making a big coil. Okay, you're gonna make this coil, right? And so that's really a good coil. I'm gonna press it down. And then I'm actually going to get a tool because I didn't get a tool before. Sorry about that. Thought I was so organized, huh? And I try to turn that little piece in so it doesn't stab anybody. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my wire up so it looks like this. Okay. Just like that. So now we are going to start putting on your spools. Now they don't have to be the exact same. They don't have to be the same width. They can be different um, sizes. The only thing is you wanna make sure that you have something to glue together. So this one may be bigger, but I need to center it so that when I glue it on here, I can still get the wire through. So I'm gonna put this as my base and I'm gonna put this on first. And before you start, you want to make sure that this isn't going to go through. So what I usually do is I just kind of play with it and get it kind of flat. And it's, you know, you guys, I have, yet, I've done these many times. I have yet to have the bottom perfect, but I don't think anyone's looking. You can spread it out a little bit and then I flatten it. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on it. I don't use a lot of glue, but um, you do want to make sure you use enough so that it's going to stay right. Ugh. So here we go. We're going to put this on here. And now I'm going to take my next spool and I'm going to slide it on. Okay. Slide it on like that. 
and then I'm just going to hold it for a second. And if you guys have used 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac, you know that it doesn't take a long time to set up, right? So then I'm going to just hold it for a second. The other thing I want to mention is, you can see, this one I took off the label, so there's nothing on it. These were actually older, and they have writing on them. And here's another one that has writing. I try to make sure that I don't have a plain one or one where you can see the paper on the top. I try to do one on the top that has some sort of writing on it or it's nice and clean, okay? So then you're gonna keep continuing. Now, I usually do six or eight, but you can do as many or as few as you want. Maybe you only wanna do three. That's fine. It's totally up to you for how many you wanna do, okay? And again, my, my whole um, idea for doing these little tutorials was not necessarily to even teach you guys something, but to show you how easy some things are that maybe you haven't tried yet. So I'm just showing you the way I do it, and you may find a, a better or easier way. And hey, that works too, right? I just like sharing my ideas. I don't necessarily like doing the tutorials, but I do like sharing my ideas. Because there's, a, you know, you guys, it's kind of like when I taught. I mean, there's a lot of prep to doing this. I mean, yeah, I could reach for stuff and grab stuff and do it kind of um, off the cuff. But I don't know about you. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Because that would be the moment I couldn't find something or I would have to, you know, wing it. And sometimes I, I'm not that person. I like getting my hands dirty, but I like having what I need close by. Does that make sense? I don't know. Must be the art teacher in me or something. I'm not sure. Okay, so you can see I'm just kind of doing this, making sure it's all good, right? Making sure it's all good. Okay. All right. And I'm not going to use all of them. Let's just do five. So I'll put one more on. We don't want this to take until tomorrow morning. And we know that with my chatting and not concentrating, we could do that. You know, even when I was in church and I was going through confirmation, even the pastor came up with a nickname for me, and that was Battling Brook because I talk so dang much. Everything should be social as far as I'm concerned, right, people? So that's why I'm not a great person online, because if you want to learn how to do it and you don't want to be sitting here listening to me jibber-jabber, my, uh, my, my YouTube channel is not for you, because I do do a lot of peripheral talking, right? Okay, so I'm going to let that set up a little bit. So um, for this one... At this point, I would let it sit here for, for a second or two. Just let it dry, right? So then maybe what you're going to do is you're going to decide on what you want for your charms. So all I do for my charms, super simple, I pick out a couple things that coordinate with whatever colors I'm doing. So obviously, you can see I did pink here, so I was trying to do things that coordinate with the pink, right? Uh, this one I did pink just because I had everything out, and I thought, okay, I'll do pink, or I could even do white if I wanted. I take a little bit of um, chain and I put on two anchor beads and then I go in between every other one and put a charm on it. And then I, in the uh, half, maybe uh, two thirds of the way down, I split it in half and I put a jump ring on it. Now you could put a clasp on it so that the person who gets it as a gift could take this off and if they wanted to, they could use the charm for something else. I leave it on there because personally, I think it looks really cute. And even if you use all the ribbons, you can reuse it again, right? Okay, so this may not be completely dried right this minute, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. If any of you have done beading, you know how to make a loop, right? So I'm going to go like this and I'm going to come back around and I want my loop to be kind of big, okay? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it up like that a little bit. And this is not traditional beading, okay? And it can be as sloppy as you need it to be because you're going to cover it up with a little piece of ribbon, okay? So I'm going to pinch it and then I'm just going to start twisting it, okay? 
I know you guys probably can't see this, okay? So then I have this, okay? So I'm gonna get my little wire cutters. And what I try to do is I try, see you can see I have a lot extra, but I'd rather do that than have to start over because it's not long enough, oops, okay? So then I have that. And now I'm going to take this piece and I am just going to stick it into the base of the bobbin. Well, not the base, the hole. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, it takes a little maneuvering. Okay, you don't want anything sticking up because you don't want anyone to poke their hands. And usually there's enough room for you to get in there. Then I just kind of feel it, make sure. Okay, so now at this point, you could start painting. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to paint it. Okay, and if anyone's painted wood, you know how to do this. If you haven't, well... There's really nothing to it. It's a paintbrush and paint, and you paint the wood, <laughs> okay? Pretty self-explanatory. Oops, but don't get your pins in the paint because you don't want to get pin, you don't want to get paint on your ribbon. So then I'm just going to paint all this, right? And you can do as little or as much as you want. And with one coat on the wood, I have found that it gets super absorbed, meaning it just, the wood just sucks the paint up. So I start at the top, and I leave the words alone. So I don't paint the top and I don't paint the bottom. I only am painting everything in between. Okay, so this is the easiest way I do it, going up like that. And I make sure it's painted all the way around. So what happens is when I'm done painting this and I get down to the bottom, it's usually dry at the top and I can put another coat on, okay? So I'm just going to be painting this. Hope you guys are having a nice week. It's Friday. Hopefully you have some fun stuff planned for the weekend. I'm going to be helping out at church because my, my granddaughter is going to be at a retreat um, because she's getting ready to make her first reconciliation, or maybe some of you don't know, that means her first confession tomorrow. And then in two weeks, she will have her first Holy Communion. So it's kind of a big deal. And I said, well, you know what? I said, then let me bring lunch for everybody because I wanted the teachers to not have to do anything for the retreat. So I'm taking lunch over there. And before I do that, I'm going to have coffee with somebody. And then... <laughs> Get the fun job of doing taxes on Sunday. Yippee, because we're just going to stay for Mass at 4 o'clock. So then that leaves Sunday to do the job. Of, I, I, I know, we wait until the very last second every year, you guys. I know some people do it, like, as soon as they get their their W-2s or whatever the you need. I never can remember the name of them. But I am like, nope, because every year we got to pay. So... They're not getting my money until the very last second, you guys. Um, and, of course, I'm stressed out the whole month of April thinking, we have to do taxes, we have to do taxes. Yeah, well, and my husband's great because we just do it on a program. And he downloads it. I fill out all the information, do everything, and then he double checks it, and then we just send it in. So it's not that. It's just, you know, it's putsy. Wouldn't you rather be doing something other than taxes, right? Well, maybe some people, if you're an accountant, you probably love it. But for me, ugh, no thank you. So many other things I'd rather be doing. Okay, so that's that. I would usually go back up to the top and do another coat. But because I want it to dry so that we can move on with this tutorial, I'm just going to let it dry real quick. Okay, so there's that. So see how easy that is? Super, super simple. Let me grab a wipe to get and wrap it around so it doesn't, my paintbrush doesn't get hard. Um, and I learned that trick years ago from Tim because I used to quick run and wash my uh, brushes right away. And then I don't know what he was doing, but he goes, oh no, I just wrap it in a wipe. 
And then when I'm done with it, then I go wash it out. But the wipe keeps it moist and it doesn't get hard. I'm sure a lot of you already know that. Okay, so while that's drying, I do want to talk about something else. I put pins in here, right? And even with these short little pins that I have, you still get poked. So what I do once I put them in is I use my wire cutters and I take off the ends. So they're still a little sharp, but it doesn't have the point anymore. So then the person you're giving it to doesn't poke themselves. And I've tried to stick them in to the lace so they don't come out the other side, but somehow <laughs> almost all of them come out the other side. So there's a pokey thing at least on one or two of them, okay? So my suggestion is that you either find the teeny tiny sequin pins, you can use Garmin pins, you can use um, washi tape. I just happen to like using the pins and then just clipping the end of it, okay? So now um, with this one, just to give it a little bit more pizzazz, I just took some stickles and I just put it on my finger because you guys know I'm more of a finger person than I am a brush person. And of course it won't come out now. Yeah, there we go. You know, just a little of this, right? And just added it on here and just kind of went through and added a little bit of sparkle, okay? You can do as much or as little, or you don't have to do any if you don't want, right? And if you want to really do it, I'll just put this like this. This is another way. You just put it on, turn it, right? I'm not showing you anything you don't know. I'm just saying this is a suggestion. They aren't going to actually see it, but you do see it in between the spools. And when they take it off, kind of a nice little surprise, right? To see the sparkles. Okay, so I'm going to move this, okay? And I'm going to put the cover on this. We're going to move that out of the way. Move my pins, move my wax, okay? There we go. All right, so you don't need the glue anymore. So you only need the glue really at the beginning, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach my charm. And I do that next because the, I can let the rest of it dry and I can decide what ribbons or what or, um, yeah, or um, twine or because you can do just about anything on here that will fit in between here, which I should note now. The larger the spool, meaning the height, right? I shouldn't say. Um, the larger the spool, the taller the spool, the more ribbon choices you have to make. This is um, an inch, and really I think it's about five eighths in between. So you can't do any of your wider ribbons unless you don't care if it goes into the next spool. Okay, so you have to do ribbon that fits in between here. Okay, does that make sense? I keep asking you like I'm going to get a response or something, right? Sorry. Okay, so you're going to open up your jump ring. Okay, and let me grab my tool. Okay, so if you've never seen one of these, this is to open and close a jump ring. And I only have a ribbon on it so that I never lose it. Okay, so if this were closed like this, right, I'd hold on to it with a tool, put it in, and it just opens it. It will change your life if you don't have one. <laughs> Okay, and I'm just going to put this on here, and then you put this back like this, and you just move your finger, and it closes it, and it's done, right? So let me grab a piece of ribbon so that we can tie on something so that it looks finished, right? And it can be anything. Let's say I'm going to use pink. So I will put a piece of pink on there. A little bit um, larger, a little bit um, darker pink, right? So here's what I do. So we're letting it dry. We did that. So now put the dangles there. And I just take it 
and I don't even tie it in a knot, you guys. I just tie it really tight, right? Just like that. See, so you can't see. Um, and I want this to go down. Are you kidding me? Hang on. Oh, really? You're just not going to work because I'm on camera. Okay, I need to take this off, you guys. I did it too high up on the ring. I want it to be on the base. So I'm going to slide it down, okay? And now I'm going to retie it, okay? And just pull it. And then for me, I just always cut it on an angle. Try to make it a little uneven, right? And that's a pretty crappy angle there. Sorry about that. There. Okay. So you've got that part done, right? Super simple. Now, all you're going to do, and I'm just going to do one, okay? So that you're just going to take your ribbon and literally, when I say it's that simple, you just keep rolling it until you decide how thick you want it. And the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to show you what I do to the pen, I, sh I told you about it, but I didn't show you. Okay, so this is nice, nice and thick. You're being very generous with someone, right? So now I'm gonna take my pin and I'm gonna stick it in, okay, like that. But you can see what I was talking about. This comes out. So then I take my wire cutters and I cut it off, okay? It's a little sharp, but it's not gonna poke you, okay? You go ahead and you keep doing that until you have it finished like this. And then you have a darling spool holder for ribbons or twine or um, baker's twine or just plain old ribbon. I mean, if you wanted, you could wrap this around here. You can do a color coordinated, whatever you want to do, you guys. I just wanted to do something fun. So if you stayed till the end of the video, here's my surprise. I'm going to give these both away. I'm going to send these out in the mail to somebody because I just love giving these away. I just think they're so cute. So if you got to the end of this video and you want to be in my drawing, just say, yes, I want to spool or I want a holder or yes, put me in the giveaway. I don't care what you write. If you want to be included, just make sure that you make a comment saying, yes, you want to. Okay. That's all I'm asking you guys. Not much not hard. So in the meantime, I will say goodbye. I will finish this one up and I will put my ribbons and my laces on it so that it is ready to go to two new homes. You have, oh see, I even missed something there. I'll have to repaint that. Um, you will have until Sunday evening. I will draw Monday, sometime on Monday, and hopefully the person who gets it. <laughs> it doesn't take me three draws. It only takes me one draw. And um, I will send out these two little ribbon holders to their new owners. So as usual, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for taking some time to visit me. And I hope you have a fabulous weekend, you guys. Take care until later. Bye.